Uh, I'm leaving. You know, I made my mind up. And he said, all right. So he takes that wad of $100 bills out, peeled one off, crumpled it up and threw it at me and said, you're going to need this then when you're living on the streets with your mother one day. And uh, 11 years old, man, having your hero throwing the towel on you, basically. And I was like, you know, that ain't happening. Like, I'm not going to be dictated by that challenge right there. You know, you're, you're, you're going to find out, you're going to see. That's just the stuff that was going through my head. I'm going to make it happen regardless. So from that moment, a spark was. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining another uh, YouTube video here in a podcast recording. As you all know, we have our podcast called New Level Podcast, where we talk about life, business, and even faith. Um, and today, today we have a great guest. It, I'm honored to actually speak with him uh, on camera and record this audio for you guys, pick his brain, learn about you know his journey, uh, the things he's learned, uh, you know, uh, since he was uh, a child. So um, I'll introduce him so that way you guys know who he is. Uh, he's the CEO of People Building, uh, host and leader of What Are You Made Of, which is a great podcast. I recommend you guys to listen up and uh, and learn a lot. He has great guests in there as well. Um, and just released a book called Rocket Fuel, uh, which we'll talk about today. Um, I definitely have a lot of questions and uh, get a lot of it, uh, you know, a few insights from from that. But with that, Michael, just give you a little a little bit of a uh, time to introduce yourself, my friend, and I'll uh, we'll get started here. Yeah, what's happening, Julio? How you doing, man? Good, man. Great. To thankful have you. to thankful to be here. I like to start every interview with gratitude because it means so much to me to be able to have this opportunity. Uh, and also thank you to to your uh, audience for uh, showing up and listening. Uh, but man, look, I'm just a little guy from outside of Philadelphia. And I grew up in a broken home. Don't remember my parents together. Grew up around a lot of broken people. But somehow I always found a way to see the positive in things and did never accept what these folks were telling themselves, which is more destruction than, than creation. And... Uh, throughout my life just build up through that um and continue to become un, you know more and more unstoppable as i get older until i'm plucked from this planet julio i want to be the kind of guy that can accomplish whatever i want to accomplish and help other people see the same thing in themselves that's good that's good i actually like that the fact that you know you know it's not just living for yourself you're living to to live some sort of legacy some sort of you know blueprint for others to to follow right um man you know i i always tell my guests you know i i hate talking about results i like to talk about the process and the journey that get those people to where they're at today right i think it's more valuable than the actual result itself um so i want to you know take you back to like your beginnings and you know just you know pick your brain and maybe see what really motivated you um i always talk about this analogy of the shark and the, the fish tank uh what got you to either run toward it or you know just run away from it right um so you know tell me a little bit about your beginnings what you think motivated you or or, or someone that you maybe were following um as a role model um what do you what do you think uh, uh from your you know constant your context and environment when you were little uh, got you to where you're at today. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that I like to say my life was broken up so far into four segments. One, when I was younger as a kid, uh, I just was on a mission just to be a leader and inspire people. My, my, my mom imprinted that in my mind at a young age that I was inspiring her and I was going to be a leader. And I just operated under those premises, uh, under that premise. And then from there, uh, for until I was about 18, I went purposefully towards my mission and towards my goal. And then when I was 18, I got to college and lost my, lost my purpose, man, lost my intention. And I started chasing girls and partying and went on that for about five to six years. And, and during that period, it was fun at first, but then it was dark and destructive and uh, miserable and, and it ended up being lonely. Uh, the next period was when I met my wife and decided to go and be serious about a family and a career um and learned that you know i had to have an intention again which i did and that was a period of time where i just focused on my career and, and building and building and building and now 
about two, two and a half years ago, the fourth mm-hmm. segment of my life has started where I'm taking everything that I learned over my life, using it for myself as well, but also disseminating it out to the public and to the globe and making sure that other people learn from the lessons that I've learned from. And also I'm continuing to learn as well. You know, I'm, I'm continuing to absorb information every single day to improve my knowledge, my spirituality, my mental game, and uh, continue to work hard in the gym, as you can see with, um, uh, you know, it looks like I have a small shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's great, man. I, uh, fitness is a huge part of my life. And actually, uh, one of the things maybe I got into social media and, uh, you know, got motivated into inspiring others. You know, I, I competed in men's physique. I competed in like a big, big stage. And I mean, oh, that's a whole story. But uh, uh, fitness is, is a great part of maybe the mindset of you know, not giving up, you know, trying your best every single day and, and making progress, you know? Yeah. You know, where you're going after. So yeah, you yeah. said your, your mom was like one of your biggest, uh, I, you would say, advisors and, and motivating you to become a leader and whatnot, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, when I was a young kid, I lived with my mom. I came from a broken home. I don't remember my parents together. Mm-hmm. And I lived with my mom full time from till I was about eight years old and went to my dad's every other weekend. Uh-huh. And uh, when I got to be about eight years old, my mom uh, was moving on to her third marriage and I moved into, uh, we were getting ready to move into another man's house, which I didn't, you know, it was kind of, I knew him from meeting him, but I didn't really know him. And so at that young age, I'm like, well, well I might as well just move in with my dad and try it there. And he was on to his second marriage. Mm-hmm. So I figured I'd try that out. And when I did that, I lived there for three years in my dad's house. It was a very conflicting time. There was a lot of problems with my parents and step parents fighting. And, you know, when adults act like children, it ends up pouring down on the kids, affecting them. And uh, I went through a lot of abuse, um, mostly mental and psychological abuse, threats. When I was about nine, I used to sleep with my baseball bat at night because I was scared. I just didn't feel secure based on what, what I was hearing and seeing. And then uh, when I turned about somewhere between 10 and 11, I had enough. I realized this wasn't an ordinary situation. This isn't what kids should be living in an environment like this. Right. You know, when you go through something that you're always around, you become accustomed to it and you start to think it's normal. But I realized at the moment after a point, I was just like, this is not normal. So I uh, talked to my mom and she ended up filing court papers to get me back custody back to her house. And my dad one day got these, these papers delivered to him and, uh, after weeks and weeks went by, they, they didn't come. I was waiting for it to be delivered. And I came home and there was tension in the room, like thick. <laughs> I could tell the house that something wasn't right. So I saw my dad with these papers in his hand and uh, he said, go to your room. Now, Julio, my dad was my hero. He, he was a hard worker, had a masonry company, um, had big forearms and rough hands. And he used to carry this wad. If you know anything about construction workers, especially Italian guys, they used to, they, no wallets. Just carry a wad of $100 bills with a rubber band around it. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought that was the coolest thing. He used to show it off. And, uh, you know, so he came back and confronted me about the papers that he had in his hand and said, hey, it says here you want to move back with your mom. And uh, you got it well here. I, I don't understand why you would want to do that. You know, she's got men coming in and out of the house on her third marriage. They don't have any money. And here you want to leave here and go to that. And I just remember my mom telling me when she was going to file those papers, don't leave me hanging out on a limb. Because when I file these court papers, you got to stick to your guns because they're going to talk you out of it. They're going to try to talk you out of it. So you need to stick to your guns. I remember saying that. And uh, that moment I said, you know, I'm not discussing this, Dad. Uh, I'm leaving. You know, I made my mind up. He said, all right. So he takes that wad of $100 bills out, peeled one off, crumpled it up and threw it at me and said, you're going to need this then when you're living on the streets with your mother one day. And uh, 11 years old, man, having your hero throwing the towel on you, basically. And I was like, you know, that ain't happening. Like, I'm not going to be dictated by that challenge right there. You know, you're you're, going to find out. You're going to see. That's just the stuff that was going through my head. I'm going to make it happen regardless. So from that moment, a spark was lit in my life that I've lived off of and drove off of for 30 some years. Subconsciously, I was doing it because I didn't want my dad to win. And so about two years ago, I became really aware of something in my life was different than, than, than most people. Like there's something, I have something that I I don't know what it is. It's some kind of superpower or something that, and no matter what happens to me, 
I keep elevating, my graphs keep going up in my life. What is it? I got to figure this out because it's powerful. Mm -hmm. And I looked back and did an assessment and I realized that I was taking everything that came my way that would stop or slow down most people. Mm -hmm. And I was storing it in my fuel tank instead of my trunk where, where most people store their stuff and it weighs them down. I was putting it in a fuel tank, converting it into rocket fuel to blast way past any setback and become unstoppable. And that's what it, this this whole concept came from. And I became aware of once I did that, I'm like, Shh, man, I got to tell people about this thing. This is so powerful. So I came up with the, the rocket fuel law. I wrote a book about it. it. just came out recently. It's a bestseller on Amazon. And uh, yeah, man, that's where it, all, <laughs> where it all started. It all started? No, no, no. I mean, I could see... Um, I could see a lot, you know, like how you say, I, I, I've listened to some of your podcasts and you always say, you know, like, call me because I know if, if you relate to this, you're going to learn from this. You kind of use this phrase uh, pretty commonly. And, and as, as you were telling about your dad, I could say I could see some of that in me with my dad as well. Like, you know, like my dad had a multiple different, you know, uh, relationships and different, you know, kids here and there. Like he never really, st you know, kind of stay with one you know one relationship so i guess all his kids kind of suffer from 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 you know his immaturity i want to say you know uh, lack, of, so, lack of commitment man really commitment. what it comes down to right and so you know to me is you know now i try to be completely opposite of that and i'm i could see that in you like you're trying to you know who's gonna win is his example gonna win is it is it am i gonna go back to what i you know saw my dad do or or, or am i gonna man up and commit like you like you're you know like you're saying um, yeah i love that man yeah so, i mean i i i like to follow and and, and mimic or emulate the people that are doing the things i want to do instead of parents most people follow their parents did you know that most welfare recipients are like fifth and sixth generation welfare recipients yeah. and it's because they're following the pattern of their parents and the people before them i interrupt patterns like that's the type of person i am i don't go with a pattern i interrupt patterns i'm a cause not an effect and so that's the difference and i recommend anybody listening to this start interrupting patterns be the cause be the reason something changes you know that that's the difference man uh, i i you know and it's not easy though it's not easy it's you know to yeah. interrupt the pattern because everybody in your family everybody around you is, is so accustomed to that that when someone is you know thinking differently you know coming home and doing something different than everybody else they're like okay you, you know think you got one of you know on top of us or you you, you know you big yeah, I do. that's what i say yeah i do so yeah, it's, get to, yeah I, I look man here's the thing you just said it's it's not easy and 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 it's right but when you have an a, a individual core mission right in your life right which mine is all people are unstoppable to live in the life of their dreams that's my mission i'm sticking to that mission i'm committed to it and the people are either going to get on the board with the mission or they're going to leave the mission it's up to them it's not up to me I'm just i'm just committed to what i want to do just because other people aren't committed doesn't mean i'm not going to be committed to my thing so what they're telling you a lot of them is that they're not committed and they gave up on themselves and they don't have a core mission that they're following so they're going to try to pull you off of yours right. when you know that the thing here is is a lack of knowledge when you have lack of knowledge of what this this core mission situation is and where you're staying on top of something then it is hard but let me tell you something when you get your core mission and you're committed to it, it ain't hard anymore. Amen. Yeah, it's easy. It's, it's not. It's not a. It's not a. Uh, a guessing game. It's predictable. You. You know where you're going. And you know what the other people are saying and why they're saying it. They're not talking about you. They're talking about themselves. Yeah, they're hurting when they see someone else. You know. You know. Try to do something for themselves. They try to. Right. Right. And if you get off of your track because they say that to you, that's not helping anybody. So look, look, look. When I'm growing up, when I was around a lot of broken people, and I heard a lot of alcoholics and drug addicts and people that were dealing with depression and anxiety tell me why they were dealing with it, and their minds telling them, I'm under no obligation to buy their bullshit. Like I don't. I, I'm not. I don't have to listen to what their brain's telling them, their mind's telling them, just because they're buying it. So when the people are talking, a lot of times they're talking out of their subconscious mind where they don't even know what the hell they're saying half the time. Right. So why would you listen to that? You know, so that's where the knowledge of this comes into play, which makes you stronger, which allows you to create your environment, which allows you to control your environment rather than the other people's subconscious minds controlling their environment. Oh, you're, yeah. Get you. I got you. So, so tell me a little bit about this, man. How you got? I know you got into sales. I know you you slammed your your test to your teacher. 
barely, <laughs> barely spoke English like myself, and uh, and you went and did your did your thing. So, what was the first job? What 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 did you you know? What was your plan? I haven't told that story in a while. I haven't told that story in a while. So yeah, I was at a college, at a business school, uh -huh. and the professor I couldn't understand him because and, I, and again, no, nothing to the fact that. Uh, he didn't speak English well, but I just couldn't understand him. And I ask a question to clarify, and then they give me an attitude. I'm paying to go to school there. <laughs> right, That's right. not right. So, yeah, I just got fed up, and I was ready to go out and start making some money. And I went into uh, the restaurant business. If you've seen the movie Cocktail with Tom Cruise. I'm going to write it down. Watch it. Yeah, it's an old movie, basically. And he did the same thing, and he went into the bar business and thought he was going to be a bartender and open up his own bar in the Caribbean and had these dreams, cocktails and dreams. That's what they called it. Okay. And I watched that movie and I'm like, yeah, I want to do that. That'd be so cool. And so uh, I went right into the restaurant business afterwards and then realized that, man, this the money ain't good enough here. This isn't the right vehicle. Uh, so one of my customers that used to come in my restaurant, Joe, who's a good friend of mine now, uh, used to come in all the time. And he said, hey, man, you should come work for me. And it was an in-home sales gig. And uh, I did that. And I ended up doing that for nine years, cutting my teeth in sales, man, handling injections, you know, building rapport, closing deals. And uh, for nine years, I did that. And that's that's how I learned sales. What what do you guys sell in there? We were selling water treatment systems, like water softeners and filters. And Okay. okay. So that's not, I mean, it, was it easy to sell or was it? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, let's say we, we were going to these appointments and the people were having us to come out to test their water and they didn't know that we were definitely going to sell them something that night, but we would show them what was in the water. It was all legit. I mean, yeah, and yeah. then show them the difference in the water, okay, clean okay. versus hard water, irony water, smelly water. Gotcha. And if they liked it, then we would show them what, how to fix it. And then we would try to close the deal that night because most people don't make decisions very fast. And you have to kind of try to talk them into it. Right, <laughs> so, right, right, right. Yeah, so it could get difficult sometimes. But we were doing anywhere between, you know, eight to fifteen a month each, like sales reps. Okay, okay. At, at five to seven thousand dollars a pop. Oh wow! Okay, so that was a that was a, a pretty good transition from from the restaurant for sure. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And so then, then, then mortgage. I know that that you you're you're very involved in mortgage now. I don't know what the what the journey or the time frame from there to 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 that you know when you got into real estate lending and what and whatnot look like was it like pretty after the nine years in there the yeah straight to to lending or what yeah so i was just tired man of uh driving around i would drive all day man to appointments all over the place uh all up and down the delmarva peninsula which is delaware maryland virginia Okay, okay. And uh, I got sick of it, and I just started thinking about well. And by the way, while I was in it, a lot of people may re like resonate. This may resonate with a lot of people. Yeah, I, I felt stuck. I felt like I was making decent money, but it wasn't like great money. But I felt stuck. I felt like this is like I'm stuck here, and if I go try something else, I'm going to have to start over again, which is so stupid because I wasn't making that much money. Right. But I didn't realize what else was out there, and I just knew I was big, like destined for something bigger like some kind of so i just got my real estate license and did it started off as part-time just to ease what my way into it okay and i started i started having success and then i decided to get in the mortgage business and started having success so you were doing as, that part-time while you were doing this yeah but once i got in the mortgage business i stopped i stopped the the sales game the water treatment game in-home sales game and uh went into the mortgage business and i made you know 120 000 my first year and then the next year, 200 some thousand and a year after that, 300, I just kept going up, up, up and up. Yeah. And as a loan officer and then building a brand, uh, a team and then a branch and then a division with several branches. And that's where we are now. We have uh, just under 40 employees running a, a, a large division. Three of my best friends working with me. My little brother works with me. We have a great time, great group, that's just cool. building, building a great company. And that's, you know, that's something that I work on. I, you know, I don't identify as a mortgage guy. I know the mortgage business very well, uh -huh. but I'm on to things that to me, I just, that's, that's the, uh, you know, part of my game. I, yeah. I'm really leaning into tech, man. I mean, we have a tech company that we're starting Okay, um, and also helping non-tech entrepreneurs with tech ideas, help them launch tech companies. Because here's the thing, most entrepreneurs get an idea and then they go to the grave and die with it because they don't know how to they don't do it. They don't know what to do with it. They don't know how to execute on that idea. Right. And so we have resources now that we're basically taking non non tech entrepreneurs that the entrepreneur knows they have know how to build relationships. They know how to sell. They have an idea, but they don't have the rest of it. And we give them the rest of it. 
And so um, our company, uh, I'm part of what's called the Idea Squad with Sela Labs. And we help help develop tech companies, man. And I'm going to be building a portfolio, tech portfolio of 100 plus companies in the next five years. Wow. So, so this is already built. That's already established the lending company. I mean, you got 40, 40 employees plus. And so now you're starting this new journey. Plus you're still doing the podcast. Yep. You, That's you, a, that, by the way, the podcast is a great relationship builder, meeting people builder, I, I agree, credibility I builder, um, you know, learning builder. I mean, there's all kinds of things that come along with it. Everybody <laughs> should have a podcast. I agree. I agree. And so now what, what made you go to, to, to the tech industry? I mean, being, you know, in the, I mean, I guess, you know, always, uh, you know, not getting stuck. I feel like that's been, you know, part of your, your life all the time. You know, like you, you, anytime you feel stuck, you probably go and try to, you know, something new. And keep yeah, going. no, I, I just met a guy on Instagram and huh? his name's Jared Yellen and he's the founder of Sela Labs. And I, I just, we connected, man. And when you, when you have a purpose and you're so clear on your purpose, you can really find other people that align with you well. And we hit it off and we started talking about this idea for Blueprinted, the new tech product that we have coming out. Okay, okay. And and uh, it went from there. And then I saw his mission and, and what his vision was for his company and what he wanted to do with people. And I'm like, dude, I'm all in. I love it. Let's go. And I saw the scalability of tech, but I also saw the reachability of how many people you can actually reach with it. And it was a no-brainer. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I, you know, I, to be honest with you, I, I resonate a lot with, you know, what you were saying about, you know, being in a company for such a long time. Cause I mean, I work for a corporation myself still, and I'm, I'm, I'm in that bridge where, where you have to jump from, from the corporate world to, to having your own business. Yeah. And when do you, when do you see that, you know, your business has enough traction or enough momentum to to make that jump you know what i mean so i mean you can probably tell me this because you've made those jumps over and over i could see uh, i mean what would you say to those listening and i try to be vulnerable because i think i feel like it helps those that are listening and probably have the same you know the same situation uh, but yeah give us a little bit of insight on that well i can tell you what i did that first time i made sure that i had three months worth of bills in the bank okay three months of overhead in the bank and then i jumped <laughs> so That's <laughs> I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, but I know that when you don't have a plan B and the plan A is the only thing you have, you make it work. So that's what I did. And uh, right now what I'm doing is not that. I, I got the mortgage vehicle. We have money coming in. And then I made sure that's doing what it's doing and making sure that that's being built, continuously okay. being built. And then from there, adding to it, adding other things that align with it to it and see the tech thing aligns with it because it aligns with everything else I do. So you just, you know, to me, you have your main thing, get really good at it, and then make sure that whatever you get into next, if you're going to keep this main thing, make sure the other thing aligns with it. Align. Okay, gotcha. If so it's you're a, not like, yeah, if yeah. You, yeah, if you're in a corporate job and you don't want to be in that corporate job, and, and at the end of the day, you want to leave that corporate job, mm -hmm. you need to get your side hustle, making sure that your side hustle is paying your bills. Once your side hustle is paying your bills, you can leave your corporate job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. It's to the point where I could do it. It's actually to the point where I... I should have done it a while back, but you know it's it's you know one of those things. I'm, we're actually getting started in the in the mortgage world because we're just starting our first home and whatnot. But I will leave that for another another day to talk about it. But uh, um, now, I'm man, good I, you, you, you're you're saying you're looking for a mortgage? No, 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 no. I actually just just we just bought our our first home or you know refi with our you know in laws and you know getting started that way. And then you know we're we have a plan and a vision for how we want to, you know, create our, you know, I guess, real estate portfolio, if you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is the way we, you know, got our, our foot in the door. Oh, cool. cool. To continue to grow it. But um, I was going to ask you about your book, man. Uh, uh, I want to, you know, kind of, you know, listen from the source of, of, you know, the topics that, you know, those that are listening can find in there and, you know, um, just to give a little bit of light to, to, you know, all the hard work you put in there. Yeah, I mean, Rob, the main message in it is to turn all setbacks, disappointments, letdowns into rocket fuel for your future. That's the main thing in it. Uh, but it talks about everything from relationships to learning to finding a mentor to everything that I went through in my life to get to where I am today. I spelled it out in little sh short stories and basically explained everything and how I think. And, uh, you know, there's, there's different things in there of specific words that I use a lot that help me focus on different things. Yeah. But, uh, 
but yeah, th there's really powerful things in there. As, as far as the relationships go, like I've been married almost 18 years going on. It'll be 18 years this month. Oh, wow. uh, how that relationship has gone and how to make sure that you maintain that relationship. I mean, I, to be married 18 years successfully, you have to know something about relationships, you know? So, uh, and, and also entrepreneurship and relationship together is a difficult thing sometimes for people. So you need the knowledge for that. So I provide that in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a powerful book. When you're done reading that book, you, if you implement the things I talk about, you'll be on your way to becoming unstoppable. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I actually was looking at uh, all the reviews and uh, the people that, you know, have, uh, you know, leaders that have, uh, you know, kind of read it and in, in, uh, on your on your website. And um, it, it looks like, you know, you have, you know, put pretty much your whole journey in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Grant, Grant Cardone wrote the forward for the book. Oh, he did? Uh, yeah, so he wrote the forward. He's on the cover there. So I got to put his name on the cover since he wrote the forward. So that helps. And uh, he's obviously blowing up right now with everything he's doing. So, uh, but he's a, he's a big mentor of mine. Yeah, I was, I was actually going to ask you because I really didn't know the relationship you have with his, his movement itself. You know, I, I've, I've seen you as a 10x mentor. I just don't know if you were, you know, I, I just, I didn't know the relationship you guys both had. What was the relationship between you and, and, and his, his uh, movement? Well, I'm just like a lot of people. I saw him through reading the 10X rule and started reading it. And I'm like, wow, this guy's talking to me like this. I, I understand this stuff. I can relate to this stuff. Yeah. And then so I just started immersing myself in the content first, not spending any money. Okay. And I ended up going to a growth con and ended up getting my whole team on Cardone University and then just meeting all the people in the organization. And they align with what my mission is. So I made some friends inside the organization and just developed relationships, man. And uh, then I became a Cardone licensee just to, to be a part of the, the organization and learn from them and mm -hmm. um, just be around them as much as possible. And from there, just got known, man. Having success gets attention. When you have success in things, especially using someone's content, they're going to pay attention to you. And so that's that's how it all came about and, and developed. And now what my mission is now is to impact their company some way. Like, how can I impact their company besides just giving them money for their products? Like, what right. kind of relationships can I develop with them uh, and for them to help blow their business up because I love their mission? And it also is aligned with mine. So now, now talking about, uh, you know, kind of like your mission and your, uh, you know, watch all the stuff you got going on. I wanted to give you a, a you know, as, as we get into close, close here, just to kind of promote your services and products. I know you, you know, it's not just a book. I know I, I saw that you were about to, I don't know if you already launched it or not, but you got the one-on-one -on -one coaching. Is it coming up? Is yeah, it? Yeah. So just on that, like I have a coaching group every Monday evening, at 7 PM. We meet, we build a community out. It's $97 a month. It's nothing. I don't do it for the money, but okay. I make people pay because they'll pay attention when they pay. Right. Um, and I'm just building a community of people that want to be unstoppable. And every, every week I go over different things that I use in my life that I've used to become unstoppable and grow my business, grow myself personally. Um, so that's the main thing. The one-on-one -on -one coaching right now, I'll do that, but I'm not really focused on that right now. If somebody really wants to hang out with me and all that, I do have that available. Mainly though, I want people to pay attention to something. So there's a lot of digital training courses out there. A lot of digital training courses that people are selling and a lot of people that are good at marketing that have a digital training course are making a lot of money. But yet 83.6% of the digital training courses are never completed when someone buys one. That means the success rate has to be below 20% for digital training courses. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the course that doesn't work. Probably it's the people taking the course, I'm sure. But there's an issue there. So we created this tech product called Blueprinted. B-L-O-O -O, Printed. Yeah. And it is designed to solve the problem of digital video courses being ineffective. And basically, you know, if you're a creator or a consultant, in order to have impact and grow a following, you need to have transformations happening. And the way to have transformations happening is to have a blueprint of your success and then share that with people or sell it to people. So the blueprint, our, our system is basically a marketplace with a whole bunch of blueprints from different verticals, people can sell their blueprints to the market. Okay. What a blueprint is, is somebody that has success in their life in a vertical, they give a documented reverse engineer, step-by-step -step algorithmic process of how they did it from step one all the way to the last step. So that if somebody buys that blueprint, they go in and stop, they start at step one and they go through all the steps and then they have success at the end. You know, if, I don't know about you, but when I want to accomplish something, if somebody gave me the steps, the exact steps of how to accomplish something, 
I mean, all I got to do is add action and have a good attitude. Right, 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 right. So this system is going to allow people to do that. It's going to create a whole economy for people, creators to put their blueprints in there and develop communities. And uh, that's going to be coming out anytime now with a minimal viable product. And we're going to be sharing that on the market. That's awesome. I think it'll make the execution a lot easier for those that, you know, if you're following someone like yourself, right? And, you know, I just want to, I want to do exactly what you did, but here we go, you know, yeah. one, two, three, four, five. Um, that's, that's actually really cool. And I, I'm glad that you're, I mean, you're taking that leap of faith and starting that, you know, you know, from, not from scratch, but you're, you know, it's a, it's a new thing to you, but at the same time, you see the value in, um, in the, you know, the power to, to transform and make, trans like you said, transformations and, right people's life right um and by the way your english is really good by the way not like that professor that i had <laughs> <laughs> that a professor i mean i'm telling you it was like it was bad, bad good huh? for him good for him for trying to teach the class in english but man it was bad like i what do you know what do you want to do <laughs> <laughs> you know i actually got forced into my because i'm venezuelan you know yeah originally yeah. and my parents brought me to washington right and you know up there there is not it's not like san diego where i live now that right, you, know, right. you see you know hispanics all over the place so i i was forced into learning you know i didn't have any options so and it's you know going back to what you said you know when you don't have a plan b yep. all you have to do is learn and, and get it done right that's right um so man i can't let you go today and with this we'll close you talk to me about, about that and then uh we'll go into like a wisdom you know just like a final uh you know I don't know, take away from you. Um, just tell me a little bit about, I know that you know all around, you know, lending, because that's, you know, your main, your main, I want to call it your main vehicle, right? Yeah. Um, I know with COVID, a lot of things changed and whatnot. Uh, tell me a little bit about what you, what you see, you know, coming up in the next couple of months, maybe even for 2022, when it comes to rates and prices and whatnot. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure yeah. you have a lot of insight in that. <laughs> yeah, rates rates are going to go up. I mean, bottom line, um, they have to because they're, they're as low as they've ever been. But uh, as far as prices, man, I mean, the, the, the federal government's printing money at a pace that like nobody's ever seen before. Inflation's going to happen. Prices are going up because the value of the dollar is worth less. And there's a shortage of housing. So, of course, when there's a shortage of something, the supply is lower, the demand's high, the prices will go up. Uh, the cost of lumber is higher. Um, so all around, it's just going to be a, a, a crazy time. Um, I think that, you know, I saw Fannie and Freddie do make some moves to uh, slow the the purchase of uh, investment property and second home loans. So that means they're trying to do something as well to push on the primary residence loans and make sure that the people, you know, trying to buy their first home have financing and have house, have houses available to them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I think we're in for a wild ride. I think refinances are going to slow down a little bit, of course, because rates are going up. Right. And uh, that's, yeah, that's a projection. So to me, every loan officer that's out there in the mortgage business is going to have to work harder for the same amount of money. And then, you know, if they want to, if they want to make the same amount of money they made last year. Well, I think, I mean, it was easy for them in this last couple of maybe six, eight, nine months. It was, you know, people were just raining from all over, just refinancing their homes. Yep. And yep, loans were falling out of the sky. We said, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I'm actually I work at a, at a at a bank, so I, I you know I have you know I hear it all all day. So I wanted to hear from you uh, a little yep. bit about that. Yeah, same uh, stuff, probably right. You didn't hear anything different. <laughs> nothing, nothing. Uh, but yeah, man. So we'll close it down. Just you know, if someone is out there needs a, a little word of encouragement um you know to get through this 2021 i know it's been tough on some people um and those that you know listen to uh my my podcast and, and watch the videos are normally looking after the mindset of 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 the guest and you know what really get these people to never give up you know and actually just continue to grow like you were saying you know continue to go up no matter yeah. what the circumstances are so um, yeah. I, I mean, I think the first thing you need to do is understand that in order to make it somewhere, you need to know where you are currently. So assessment is a big deal with elevation, understanding what I'm, where am I right now? Finances, health, relationships, spiritual mindset. Where am I right now? And really get clear on that. That's your point A. You want to go to point B. You need to get really clear on that next. 
So clarity is a big one. That's the first C word I'll give you. Clarity. Get really clear. Take the time. I know it takes time to do. It yeah. takes a little work. But when you do this and you get really clear where you are and where you want to go, you understand the gap that you need to bridge. And then from there, you commit. You commit like no plan B, all plan A. I'm going for it. Nothing's going to stop me. And then you take consistent action towards that every single day, nonstop, no matter if it gets boring, no no matter if you don't feel like it. Consistency is more important than your emotions. So, and when you want 100% participation from yourself, all you got to do is figure out when to do, how to do it and get it done when you don't feel like it or when it gets hard. Because the other times when it's easy and when it's not hard, you know, you're going to do it. So these, those are the things that I would leave you with. All right, cool. Well, guys, I hope you took some notes today. I know uh, I feel like it was shorter than I thought, but it actually was very uh, straight to the point, which it, which is great. Some, sometimes, you know, we have interviews where we're all over the place, but I feel like today we're.